the caliber of Oklahoma. You got to be plus one, plus two, plus three. And we weren't. We just had a bad spurt in that second quarter. And, you know, the thing that was uh, 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 good about it was, you know, the defense answered and held them to field goals instead of touchdowns when they put in, put in uh, adverse situations where they had, you know, short fields to go. Uh, you know, I was proud, you know, the final part of our plan to win is finishing. And, and you know, we, we feel like we dominated the game in the fourth quarter, outscored them 13-0. And, uh, you know, so there was, there was some good things to take away, but we'd rather learn those lesson, lessons from a W than from an L. But, uh, uh, you know, like I told them, you know, we've got a 24-hour pout rule and we've got a 24-hour gloat rule. You know, after we win, we got to move on to the next thing. Sometimes guys are sitting around, they, you know, they, they revel in past successes and they're not as good the next time they go out. And then other times, uh, you know, they, they're still worried about the last week's game when they, when they didn't play very well. So we've turned the page. We're on to Morgan State. You know, we just want to play better. You know, uh, good ball clubs make their – the biggest improvements between week one and week two, and we certainly want to do that. Morgan State's at the opposite end of the spectrum from Oklahoma. You've always been really good at treating every game the same. Is that what you're? I mean, is that what you're? You're you're telling the guys just just worry worry about yourself. And <laughs> yeah, we we want to go out and play great. We want to play better than we did last week. You know, and and uh, it's an opportunity for us to. You know, get out there and show a big time improvement, and and uh, you know, so yeah, we're we're attacking it. Any other questions for Coach Fritz? There, there are reports out there that maybe Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF maybe leave, maybe just not giving notice that they want that they're going to leave the AAC for the Big Twelve. I know that's not your direct purview, but just any any thoughts on on that and, and what it could do to the league? You know, I saw some about it the other day, but you know, it's it's really none of my business. I'm just you know wanting to do the best job I can for Tulane. I, Ed, I can't hear you. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why. Now I, now I can hear you. I can yeah. hear you now, Ed. Okay. Um, Coach, this seems like a dream offense for the tight ends. Could you um, – and I know there was a lot of chatter about that before the season with Coach Long's offense. Can you talk about what those guys did and were you expecting that from them? Yeah, you know, it's uh, – we line them up all over the place. You know, they line up as the number one receiver, the widest guy. They'll be the number two guy. They'll be the number three guy. They'll have their hand in the dirt, you know, or they're connected to the uh, – you know, an attached tight end. They'll – They'll uh, be in the backfield, you know, kind of as a fullback. Uh, so if a guy's smart and can do all those different things, there, there's uh, there's opportunities to catch balls because you're going to be open. And uh, you know, I think uh, I think they caught seven balls. I, I could be wrong on that, but I think they caught seven balls for a little over a hundred yards. And uh, you know, there's four or five of them. They're wide open. There's nobody around them. So. If you, you know, the big part of what, what Coach Long has got us doing offensively, which I think is really good, is that there's a, it's really a divert. For a, if you're a smart guy, you can take advantage of it because you can play all the time because you're going to be in the right spot. If you're, if you're a rep guy, it's, it's a difficult offense for you. If you got to, someone's got to hold you by the hand and get you lined up. Mm -hmm. Those guys all are right. all smart kids. So, uh, Tyreek and, and Will and, and then, uh, Reggie Brown's going to start playing some more. Uh, same thing with Keith Jones. We didn't play Keith at this last year. Last week he was banged up a little bit, but he's healthy. You you think that 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 playing the the two tight ends gives you a chance to have a little little more run pass balance where you can you can, you can really almost be 50-50? I think you're right because uh, you know it's good matchups sometimes where you got a big guy and a little guy out on the perimeter. You know, and he can stay in that block a little bit longer. And, and uh, you know, Tyreek is probably 240, 245. You know, Will's about 235, 240. You know, so it's a little bigger guy out there on the perimeter. Most of those safeties. And a lot of times people are playing nickels, and they're more cover guys. And if you can get him matched up on that, that nickel, uh, you know, he might be blocking 185, 190-pound guy. 
You've gotten a lot of praise this week. Does praise after a loss bother you at all? Yeah, it does a little bit. You know, I, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I think we're. I, I'm proud of the kids. I'm proud of the effort. You know, we have fought through some adversity. It's an unusual story what we're doing right now. It's not. You know, we're, we're in a hotel. I don't know how long we're going to be here. Uh, we're getting well taken care of. You know, I think I mentioned it. The other day, I told our, our guys in a, our team meeting yesterday, I'd, I hadn't been in a hotel this nice until I was over 40 years old. I mean, it's a nice place here in Sheridan. Uh, you know, and we're getting fed well and everything else. But it is, it, we are disconnected from, you know, what normal is right now. But, uh, you know, we, we, we just want to get better, you know, and, 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 uh, and that's, you know, it's easy for me to do that. I got to convince a bunch of 18 to 22 year olds that, Every day we got to get out there and, and focus and concentrate and, and, and get better. Hey, we're, and we're not doing school right now either. We don't have that distraction. <laughs> I better not have President Fitz hear me say that, but we, we don't, we're, not, we're not taking classes right now. So we got plenty of time. I told, told the guys, hey, man, grab these coaches at night. We're all here in the hotel. We're not hard to find. Does that help in kind of a strange way, at least for the short term? Well, you, you know, you are, we are able to, you know, we we're still under the 20 hour a week rule. You know, mm -hmm. the problem we get into is the going to the weight room. You know, it's, that's a drive. Coming back is a drive, you know, uh, meeting rooms, you know, you got, you know, I'm trying hard not to walk through other people's meetings, you know, cause we just don't have, you know, as many meeting rooms as what we normally have. So it, that part of it's different. Uh, you know, guys come down every morning and they try to find their loop. You know, our equipment staff is doing a phenomenal job, but sometimes uh, they uh, put, a, you know, loop uh, 46 and they goof up and put it where 86 is at. And uh, now these guys are all trying to find stuff. So, you know, it, it is different, but, uh, you know, we've been here long enough now where it's kind of kind of is normal. Mm -hmm. The fact that you have a lot of experience on this team, do you think that that helps in this current situation? <laughs> I think it does. But I think that the the big part is we got we got pretty mature young men. You know, we've uh, we go out and recruit. I always tell my coaches, hey, find a guy who's had a good 18 years. If he's had a bad 18 years, we're gonna have a hard time changing him, getting him to do things the way we want him to do do it. Uh, so we got good young men. I got very few problems. Uh, you know, I stay on top of these guys. I think it's a big part of my job is to help them through this transition from 18 to 22 years of age and. But uh, thank goodness, I just, I don't have to just rail on them constantly. There's, you know, 99% uh, of these guys know the difference between right and wrong 24-7. Any, any hope that maybe you'd be back next week or what are you hearing? I have no idea. I, I, I know we're, we, we'd like that as soon as we can, but we can't go, go back till everything's uh, fixed and it's safe for us to go back. So. I'm putting that in the uh, expert's hands. Thank you. Anything else for Coach Fritz? Thanks. Just one last thing. The, the official box listed Merritt Glover as having kicked an extra point on Saturday. Did he get in for one kick or did he not play at all in that game? And, and what is his status for this week? <laughs> he did come in. He did kick uh, and uh, did get an extra point. And, uh, and he's full go for this weekend. Yeah. We, you know, before the game, he felt like he was good. Uh, and uh, – we waited a little bit, and, and uh, but he's full going out. Thanks. Thank you all. Thanks all. All right, guys. We have uh, Nick Anderson coming in here next. Thank you, Nick. All right. Questions for Nick Anderson. Nick, you guys are getting a lot of praise this week uh, after a loss. How do, how do you feel about that? Do you kind of conflict it a little bit? Um, most definitely. Uh, you know, we don't want to be a program that um, settles on more victories. Um, in the situation that we lose a football game, um, it was a lot that we needed to learn from that game, put in that situation. Um, you know, you look specifically at the second quarter where we made a lot of mistakes and where they scored uh, 23 points, you know, uh, from turnovers and from us not executing on defense. And so the big emphasis on, in the 
meeting rooms yesterday was fixing our mistakes and going back and watching tape. It was small things in that game that could have led to us being successful in the upset. So no, we're not happy or excited about, you know, us coming up short to upsetting them because the standard was for us to go up to Oklahoma and win the game. It wasn't for us to go to Oklahoma and compete. It wasn't for us to go up there and, you know, not lose by this many points. It was to go up there and win the game and we didn't execute that. So, you know, I think nobody's satisfied with the result that we had on Saturday. Nick, very first play of the game, you had a big stick for like a five yard loss, something like that. Do you kind of feel like that was kind of, I mean, you wanted to win, but that kind of a tone setter for what you guys want to do on defense this year? Oh, most definitely. Um, just one of our, you know, identities is playing hard nosed football. Um, and so that first play, um, they ran, the running back ran uh, a slip swing route to the field. And based on watching film, you know, that was a big screen tendency. So, you know, I just pressed the line of scrimmage and made a good open field tackle. And, you know, I think it got fired, every, got everybody fired up. And then for Jaden to come in the next play, you know, just being a freshman and being in the right place and making a heck of a play on the football, it just really set the tone. And that's what our defense wants to do this year. We we want to be on the field first. We want to set that tone. We want to show that we're aggressive, hard-hitting defense. But we also got to show that we're our intelligent defense. And that goes back to, you know, being in the meeting room and limiting the mistakes that we made and just cleaning everything up in week in, week out. You mentioned Jaden. He, he led all Florida high school players in interceptions last year. Didn't take him long to show why <laughs> in that game. What what about him has made him able to, to step in right away and be, a, and be a good player? Just overall, his tenacity, even at practice, his, you know, ability to come out and compete, his toughness. You know, he's not scared to come down um, and make tackles. And, you know, you saw that in the game on Saturday. You know, he was coming up, filling the gap, um, playing big boy football. And, you know, that's something that, as a upper class, and you love to see freshmen that you know aren't timid um, and ready to come in and complete, compete, and uh, play hard nosed football. And I'm I was very proud of his performance on Saturday. Nick, they they went for it in their own territory, up 23, midway through the third quarter. I know Kevin made a great play with the penetration and forced the running back wide. Was was that a little bit insulting for them? Um, Maybe not the punt there. Did you did you guys kind of take that personally at that point? I mean, most definitely. Um, you know, our coach told us, you know, that you know they had they were in plus zone territory. That you know, if they had got to uh, four down, they probably was going to go for it. Um, so we we expected it. Um, and I'm glad we just showed them that you know we're not somebody that you can just push push around. And Kevin made a great play of crashing down on the edge. Um, I should have made the tackle when the ball spit, but making Clark came down and field real good and we got, got off the field. And so I was just proud of the defense for just making a stand and getting off the field. And, you know, that's something that we struggled with last year, getting off the field on third and fourth downs. And we did a great, great job of that on Saturday. And it's something that we want to keep going and keep improving on going forward. How much time did you guys spend on that in the, in the preseason? Every day, every day the emphasis was uh, getting takeaways and getting off the field on, on third downs. And another thing that's been emphasized, that was emphasized this offseason, um, in this preseason was uh, a limiting explosives. And we had a couple of explosive plays uh, happen um, to us on Saturday. And that's something that, you know, we're trying to fine tune because that's something that also affected us last year and that we want to clean up going into this year and going forward. You're playing a team in Morgan State that's at the opposite end of the spectrum from Oklahoma. How do you guys make sure that you come out with the same intensity um, Saturday? By just having the focus of realizing that this is a college football team, you know, no matter what level, no matter what conference they're in, they're going to come in, they're going to compete. You know, people looked down on us last week when we went up to Oklahoma. And, you know, I feel like Oklahoma, you know, look down on us as well. And we don't want to do that to Morgan State. You know, we've been watching film. They got great players, uh, great athletes um, on the uh, offensive side of the ball, speed guys. And, you know, we want, we don't want to take this game lightly. We want to go out and we want to execute to our fullest potential. We want to um, fix the mistakes that we had last week and we want to play a very fine football game for this week two opponent. Yeah, Kyle, how are you guys trying to get home? Sir? How much are you guys itching to get home? Um, that's something that, that we've been talking about every day, just, you know, just being back in New Orleans, man. It's just, you know, I think, you know, time after time, you know, you just take it for granted living there. 
um, and just the culture and just being around, you know, uh, the students being in Tulane, you know, you take it for granted. And for us not to have had it uh, this past week or we'll be at home this week, you know, you miss it. You miss Yeoman Stadium. You know, you miss, you know, our fans. You know, we haven't had a game, a home game in Yeoman Stadium with, you know, a lot of fans since uh, 2019. And so, you know, that's just something that, you know, we're ready to get back to. Um, but I do want to thank everybody at the hotel, you know, thank everybody in our support staff for trying to make this hotel, you know, feel like home for us. You know, they've gone above and beyond with making sure we haven't missed a beat since we've been at the hotel. And, you know, you can't do anything but thank God for that because there's a lot of people that are back in New Orleans or Mississippi that aren't so lucky as us. You know, they can't go to a hotel. So, you know, we don't have the idea to where, you know, we're just, you know, complaining and doing none of that. Well, you know, we do miss home, but we, we're not complaining to be here. Anything else for Nick Anderson? All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. We'll have uh, Michael Pratt in here in just a minute. Thanks. No
Hey guys, he's coming. Sorry about the delay here. He'll be here in about five minutes. Okay. No problem. What are we doing here? Thank you. 
All right, guys, we got uh, Michael Pratt here. Questions for Michael. Michael, uh, how, how are you feeling right now? Any, any after effects after all of that on Saturday? Clean bill of uh, health? Yep, I'm all good. Ready for this week. Were, were you worried at any point that you might have had a knock that would keep you out of the game? Nah, I mean, got to take hits, got to get back up. It's, like, it's the name of the game. Do you think that um, the way that you responded in the second half after the three fumbles kind of uh, sent a little jolt of confidence? Not that the team didn't have confidence in you before, but the fact that you were able to bounce back from something like that, do you think that gives the guys a little added uh, uh, jolt of confidence in you? Yeah, definitely. I think just the way that everybody was working and competing, um, you know, all the way through the fourth quarter, that's something we really emphasize this offseason is, you know, playing through the fourth quarter and, you know, doing whatever it takes. And uh, I'm really proud of the guys and the way they competed. You guys are getting a lot of praise after a loss. Mm -hmm. Are you a little conflicted there by, by that? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, but, you know, Got to keep our heads straight and, uh, you know, focus on going week by week and, you know, having a great season. Michael, you're playing a team at the opposite end of the spectrum from Oklahoma this Saturday in Morgan State. Just how do you guys make sure you come with the, the same intensity that you had on Saturday? On Saturday? Um, I, think, I think last Saturday, I think we set the standard on both sides of the ball of, you know, what we have to accomplish. Um, and, you know, that all starts in preparation and practice day in and day out. Um, so I think we did a lot of really good, a lot of things really good. Um, and I think that, you know, we just got to compete every day and hold each other accountable and uh, continue our leadership, you know, no matter who our opponent is. And uh, I think this week there's a lot of things that we got to fix up on both sides of the ball, um, which is a great opportunity for us to do that. It seems like a dream offense for the tight ends. Mm -hmm. They, they look like they were having a ton of fun out there. Yeah. Saturday. Yeah. yeah they, uh, they did a really good job. Um, really proud of Tyreek James. Um, Will Wallace played their butts off. I think Tyreek was nearly perfect. Um, so couldn't have asked much more from them. Did, did he, he, he looked a little bit like an NFL guy out there on, on Saturday. Agree? Uh, I would definitely agree with that. Looked really good out there. <laughs> Coach Fritz, Go ahead, Gary. Coach Fritz just mentioned um, just how well you guys have been treated in in Birmingham. But what's the most difficult thing about being away away from from New Orleans? Um, I think at first was the focus. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just going through a bunch of different things, a lot of uncertainty of you know what was going on back in New Orleans. Uh, got a lot of people on the team with family in New Orleans and Louisiana um, that were affected by the hurricane. So just trying to stay on task and, you know, stay focused. And uh, also with transportation and where we're going to practice, uh, like I said, just the uncertainty was uh, a little difficult at first. But, you know, I'm really proud of the guys, the way that we've all come together and took this opportunity to, uh, you know, grow, grow closer with each other and, uh, you know, stay on task. I know you guys weren't able to practice yesterday, which usually you do some practice on, on Monday. Is that just the stuff you just have to be able to, to adjust to pretty quickly? <laughs> Yeah, yep, it is what it is. You know, you got to adapt and overcome and take advantage of every opportunity. Michael, Nick mentioned that it's been 2019 since you guys played a home game with a lot of people in the stands. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know you aren't here for that, but what it would be like to just finally have a chance to, to, to see a house that was relatively full for a home game, what would that mean to you guys? Uh, you know, it, we were really excited, especially having when we were supposed to have Oklahoma come in. Um, but just the, the support from New Orleans and Tulane and all those guys, um, you know, we're really looking forward to being able to get back in there as, you know, whenever that might be and uh, having our first home game, having those stands packed and uh, really looking forward to that. Did, did you see Tyron Matthews tweet? Yes, sir, I did. And your response is? Just got to, you know, I'm, Blessed, you know, awesome that, you know, he reached out like that. Um, but, you know, just got to take it and, you know, move forward. You've never met him, have you? No, sir. Would you like to? 
That would be cool. <laughs> it was quite a compliment from a guy who plays not only in the NFL, but on a level like he plays mm -hmm. to single you out for that. That's pretty awesome, don't you think? Yes, sir. I agree. Really cool. So Michael, Jaden Kennedy led all of Florida high school players in interceptions last year and took him, what, two plays <laughs> in his first game with, with you guys to, to get an interception. But just going against him in practice and, and having him as a teammate, what, what, impress, what makes him so ready to play right away? Oh, he's a competitor. Uh, he goes out there and busts his butt every single day, um, especially for a, long, a, a young guy, his leadership and, uh, you know, his communication with the guys and, you know, hopping right in and understanding the process and, you know, getting on the same page into a new, new defense. Um, he's done a really good job. Really proud of him. Anything else for Michael? Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. What's up? Just a second, boss.